This new episode of Offstage is about nostalgia. Nostalgia is defined as a sentimental longing or wistful affection of a period in the past. And I'm a pretty nostalgic person. And people that know me well know that I write songs to cope with certain emotions. They're more than just music and lyrics, they're stories and I've lived them, all of them. And in these stories I've hidden hints or we might even call them easter eggs. Words, melodies, instruments that are significant to me and Paramount is a specific kind of piano. A piano sound that is in every single one of my songs, released and unreleased. This piano means a lot to me, I used to grow up with one and nowadays it's really hard to come by. But after years of scouring the internet last year, I finally found one and I bought it. So I finally bought a CP70 electric piano. And you might think, well, it's just a regular old piano, but it's not, not to me and not to a lot of people. This piano has been used in a lot of songs and I'm talking huge nostalgic hits. Let's get to a clip. So yeah, it's been used by a lot of famous artists and bands and for multiple reasons. It doesn't feed back on those huge arena stages because you don't have to mic it up. It has a distinct warm sound and it's relatively mobile. Bands would actually tour with this thing. Because it's a real acoustic piano with real strings and hammers, it does weigh a lot. So you constantly need two people to break it down, move it around and set it up again. And of course there's tuning. These strings need tuning, especially when you're moving it around in different surroundings. But when it's up and running, my God, does it sound amazing. So it has a pretty distinct sound and it's still being used in a lot of pop songs today. That's probably because it's warm and fuzzy and reminds us of the 80s. But that's not how I use it. I like to get a lot of attack out of that piano and it sounds really percussive. And it can be heard in I think every single one of my songs except for maybe this one. The CP70 came out in the 70s and back then it was groundbreaking. A lot of companies tried all sorts of things to invent some sort of portable piano that actually sounded like a real piano. This was way in the 60s and nowadays we have all sorts of digital pianos and keyboards that sound like the real deal but back in the 60s and 70s computers couldn't handle sampling. So Rhodes came out with the Mark 1 which sounds like this. And you might know it from Justin Timberlake's Senorita. And Wurlitzer, a brand known for its jukeboxes, also released some electric pianos, and the 200A probably being the most famous one. And it sounds a little like this. And although the 200A and the Fender Rhodes sound amazing, they do not sound like a real piano, and that's because they're missing a key component strings. The CP piano sound was achieved using a traditional grand piano hammer action hitting real strings. However, Yamaha developed special strings that could be made shorter and require less of them but still be able to retain an authentic acoustic piano sound. So unlike ordinary acoustic pianos that typically have three strings for each of the middle and upper registers notes and two strings for each of the bass notes, the CP70 uses two specially designed strings for each of the mid and upper notes and uses just one string for each of the bass notes. 
This piano has an independent piezoelectric pickup underneath each string. And a piezo pickup is a device that picks up the vibrations of the strings and translates it into an electrical signal that can be amplified. Unlike an acoustic piano, the CP70 doesn't have to be mic'd up, but can be amplified using two simple XLR cables. Now for the real geeks out there, it's not stereo, it's double mono and less use a tremolo. Now for me it's a special piano because my dad used to own one. It was sold before it had its legendary status and that's a pity because I probably think we sold it next to nothing and today prices are way up. Of course not as expensive as they used to be because they used to be around $4,000 and with inflation in mind that is about $19,000 today or about 17,000 euros. Yes, science! But we eventually sold because when I was in music school learning classical piano, my piano teacher wanted me to play a piano with 88 keys, not one with 73. And then we bought a digital grant, which was nice because it helped me uh, learn about sequencing and producing. But I kept on coming back on the CP70, also because a lot of famous artists and influences of mine have been known for using them. I played my first notes on a CP70. And later on a TV show when I could use any piano on stage I wanted, I asked for a CP70. I feel like I needed it back into my life, and in one way or another, it made me feel closer to my dad. If you like this video, don't forget to tap that like button right below, share with your friends, and subscribe for new content. And also comment down below if you really like that sound of the CP70, or if you actually own one, because it's of my understanding that there aren't a lot of Belgian owners anymore. Thanks for watching, see you next week.